and welcome to Alpha Militaria TV. My name is Richard Saunders. Thanks very much for tuning in once again. Now, a little while ago, we did a video that compared the relative trajectories of a 12 foot pound and 30 foot pound 2-2 rifle. And following that, a number of people got in touch with us and asked if we would do a similar video, uh, but one that compared 177 and 2-2 at 12 foot pounds uh, in terms of trajectory over different distances. So that's what we're going to do today. So the two rifles are zeroed in at uh, 30 meters and I'll show you those in just a second. So we're going to take a sort of a ranging shot at uh, 177 and 22 at 30 meters to start with. Then I'm going to put it, uh, bring the target into 20 meters for 177 and 22, then push it out to 40 and then to 50 meters as well. So these are the two rifles I'm going to be using today. Uh, this is the 22 rifle. It's a BSA R10 Mark II running at around about 11.6 um, foot pounds uh, and I shall be using Air Arms Diablo Field pellets in it. Uh, they are the 5.52 size uh, 16 grains. And then the 177 rifle is an HW100 Sporter model. Um, this is running at around about 11 foot pounds using again Air Arms Diablo Field uh, 8.4 grain pellets uh, and again these are 4.52 millimeters in size. Now the debate as to which calibre is best for hunting has been raging probably as long as, as, as there has been air guns and pellets and the truth is they both have their plus points and their minus points but we'll put them on the range see how they compare and then we'll see if we can draw some kind of conclusion. Well, that's a nice tight group. Um, it's shooting, as you can see, a little bit high. Um, so I obviously need to make some adjustment on the scope, but I'm going to keep things as they are. I'm not going to fiddle around with the zero right now, just to keep the results of the uh, of the the test uh, pure, if you like. So um, now I'm going to move this back into 20 meters and see what the uh, what the difference is uh, in terms of uh, impact at 20 meters. Well, that's interesting. Um, I would say that there's no difference in terms of impact point between 20 and 30 meters. They're both a little bit high and right of the target. Uh, that's an adjustment thing on the scope. Uh, but that's the same kind of uh, distance over at 20 meters as it was at 30 meters. So obviously if I adjusted the scope, they would both be bang on at 20 and 30 meters. Let's move it out to 40 metres now and see how it does there.
Okay, well that's not the the best group in the world, but I'm running backwards and forwards with the the camera and the stand. That's my excuse. Um, what's that? Six or seven pellets in a little group there. Now that has dropped about, I would say, an inch and a half, inch and a quarter over 40 meters, um, which is uh, which is not bad. So let's push this out now to 50 meters and see how it performs there. Okay, so that's our group at 50. What's that? That four inch drop, I should think, over, uh, over 50 meters with the 177. Right, let's go through all of that again with the 22 rifle. That's 10 shots with the uh, with the BSA 2.2. A little bit low, but that's a little bad group there. Um, right, we'll bring that into 20 meters. This is 30 meters is the zero, just to remind you. So we'll bring this in now to 20 meters and see how it shoots that way. That's about a mil dot high point of impact, obviously aiming at the dots each time. Um, and that's hit, yeah, about a mil dot high, about half an inch high. So let's push this back to 40 and see what, uh, what happens then. Right, this is getting interesting now. Um, you can see here, this is the aim point at 40 meters with the 2.2 rifle. And uh, the impact point is closer to the 50 meter mark right down here. Not a bad group, so that's probably dropped, I don't know, four inches or so um, at 40 meters, which is quite a bit, well, considerably more than the 177. Right, now we're gonna put it back to 50 meters and see how it does back there. Now I'm going to put another mark, because this mark was hit with a 40 meter shot, so I'm going to put another mark here at 50 to aim at. And what I've done is I've pinned another piece of card underneath the board here, um, in case the, the shots drop below this original piece of card. So I'm just going to put a, a little line here so I know where the overlap is, so that we can be accurate when we uh, do the comparison. Right, last few shots at 50 meters with the 2-2.
Well, it's a good job I, uh, I put that extra piece of card in there. Let me move this back a little bit. You can probably see, so that's our aim point at 50 meters, and the point of impact is down here. Um, probably four or five pellets in that group there. So that's a drop of, I don't know, eight inches or so, which is probably twice the drop of the 177. But let's get the cars back uh, to the range and uh, take a closer look. Right then, so what do we conclude from all of that? Well, let's take a closer look at the, uh, at the target. This is the 177 side, this is the 22 side. And as I said before, both rifles are zeroed at 30 meters. So it's hardly surprising that at 30 meters for the 177 and for the 22, uh, the impact is on the point of aim. Now what's interesting is that for, uh, at 20 meters, the 177 has the same impact point as the aim point. So that's telling me that there's no need to factor in any kind of adjustment for targets between 20 and 30 meters with a 177 when you're zeroed at 30 meters. Compare that though to the 22, and I have to apologize, I looked back at the footage and realized that when I was shooting the card, I missed it with the camera. But um, the 22 at 20 meters, you can see there's the aim point there, and the impact point is a good inch above it. Um, so that's telling me that um, if I was to shoot a rabbit at 20 meters in the field, I'm going to have to give it a, an inch of hold under to be on target. Now, pushing out to 40 meters, well, the 177, here's the aim point here, and you can see the impact is only about an inch below it. Compare that to the, the 22, and there's the aim, point, uh, the aim point there, and the impact is a good four inches below it. Uh, and then at 50 meters, well, the 177, there's the aim point, there's the impact about four inches below, and then with the 22, it starts getting really loopy. At 50 meters with the 22, the aim point is up there, and the impact was down here, about a foot below it, getting on for a foot below it. Now, what conclusions do we draw from that? Well, you know, the, the debate as to which calibre is the best for hunting is going to go on and on and on forever and a day. And the reality is that both of them have their benefits. Um, the 177 is flatter, it's faster, uh, the 22 carries more impact. I would say though that the overriding consideration to have is accuracy, because regardless of the, uh, the calibre that you use, you have to place a pellet very, very accurately to affect a, a humane kill. Um, and the reality is that the greater impact of a 2-2 um, won't compensate for a badly placed pellet. Now, other things to consider uh, are that, and when you think about most of the time, uh, when, when I'm out, hunt out hunting, most of my shots are in that 20 to 40 meter range. Now, if I go up with a 2-2, any targets between 20 and 40 meters, I'm only having to calculate um, an inch of variation. You know, I'm on at 30, I'm on at 20, and I have to hold over by an inch at 40. Now compare that with a 2-2. Okay, I'm on at 30, but if a target pops up at 20 meters, I've got to hold under by an inch. And if a target pops up at 40 meters, I've got to hold over by four inches. So that's a range of five inches to have to calculate out in the field um, to place that shot effectively with a 2-2. Whereas with a 177, I've only got to work with one inch of, of variation between 20 and 40 meters. Now, of course, that obviously means that when you're out in the field, being able to uh, gauge distance or measure distance with a rangefinder is really important. So um, I hope that was useful. Um, if it was, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe as well, uh, because it does help us out. And if you'd like to know more about um, a whole range of air gunning topics, please take a look at our website, which is www.alphamilitaria.com. Thanks for watching.